Today, I'm going to summarize all of my studies that I've dedicated to uh, long COVID. I've been studying this topic for well over a year. It's probably one of the grandest areas of my scientific investigation because this appeared to be like the area of uh, greatest interest to my uh, YouTube channel audience. So I'm going, I looked at eight different theories because at the time when I'm released, when I started studying this topic, there was still no information as to really what, what truly causes long COVID and how it should be treated. There was just theories. So I looked into eight different theories and I will now present them to you in the chronological or order how I chose to study it because um, who knows which one is the accurate one. So this is all, all subjective. So this is basically how I chose to investigate the science. I'm going to tell you also what the different scientific authors were proposing the problems are, how you should test for diagnosing that problem, and therefore also they also proposed different interventions in order to deal with, with those issues. All right, so then let's get started. My name is Dr. Michael Rashek of Mirror Genomics, and the theory number one that I chose to investigate it is what I call spike clots theory. I did a big series dedicated to how spike protein might be involved in producing clots. And the system that is being affected here is your blood system, obviously, and the problem to your body are the clots that are being formed. The test that was uh, proposed by a group of scientists that you should be looking at is what was referred to as thromboelastogram or elastograph, TEG assay. And we did a separate video on that. And uh, then the treatments, we also did a separate video on that, where they proposed treatments from two different angles. Well, number one was how to deal with the damage control, and then number two is how to deal with the clots themselves. Now, where it comes to damage control, they mentioned numerous, numerous ways of doing it. One of those was vagus nerve neuromodulation, which is basically how I got introduced to the vagus nerve. This is where it got first popped in, uh, on my radar and I've been studying it ever since. But a couple more interventions that I mentioned are also now interesting to look back in retrospect because it, they also mention improving mitochondria function as well as hyperbaric uh, oxygen therapy. And the reason why this is of interest now is because these are also mentioned in the cancer intervention that I'll be telling you in a moment as well. Amongst other interventions, they also mention iron chelation, which is interesting because it, this is somewhat contrasting to the very last theory that I'll be telling you about as well. So keep that in mind, there's some contradictions as well. All right, so next one, that I started, chose to study, and it's one of the greatest areas of my investigation was IgG4 antibodies. Why did I, I did a massive series on IgG4 antibodies? Why is because it was somewhat unusual to, to see that mRNA vaccinated individuals were producing these IgG4 antibodies against spike protein. This is, was unexpected and Otherwise, it provided sci scientists an opportunity to study this rather mysterious antibody. Now, what kind of part of the body system is affected? That's your immune system and the type of problems that are created to your, bod to your body. I investigated two of, them, two of them. One of them was cancer. And I had a separate video dedicated to how IgG4s are in general can be involved in cancers. I also investigated, I made a series of videos where I investigated turbo cancers, which are called hyperprogressive disease in medicine. And again, IgG4 is involved in those as well. So check that out. And as a consequence of these studies, this eventually prompted me to also look into cancer intervention um, studies as well. I released a series of videos on that topic as well. Check that out. And the reason why this is interesting, because again, the, this is a newly proposed intervention for all cancers that focus on, again, that restoration of mitochondria function. So check that out. The other problem with IgG force is autoimmunity. So then how do you test for, for these? You would test for them by IgG4 subclass test and or 
autoantibodies. And then we also did uh, release the videos on autoantibodies. So check that out. And you'd be dealing with these two differently as well. So in terms of IgG4, one way is to, uh, was proposed by the scientists to deal with this is rituximab as well as steroids. And we also just touched a hint on how innate immunity, stimulating your innate immunity might, might be of benefit as well. So we did a specific videos series on that as well. Check that out. Now, when it comes to autoantibodies, the authors of uh, who we studied mentioned apheresis as a solution or using immunosuppressive drugs. One more that piqued my interest was potentially vagus nerve neuromodulation because when I was studying POTS disease, this is where we encountered that vagus neuromodulation could reduce levels of autoantibodies in such people. So check that out as well. Next one, next area, what I wanted to study is the idea, the hypothesis that it's the spike protein that is causing the damage and therefore it has to be removed. So I wanted to see um, a theory that talked about how to get rid of spike protein. So in uh, this study, basically the problem here for your body becomes the fact that you have too much antigen in your body, meaning too much spike protein. And as a consequence, the spike protein becomes distributed all throughout your body and that can become a problem. And how you would test for that, you would test for either the spike how much spike protein you have circulating in your blood, number one, or number two, you could test for it by uh, looking for antibodies against spike protein. And the, the authors of, um, of that review, they proposed to tackle that problem from three different uh, ways. Number one was gut microbiome support, and they mentioned uh, one of the ways to do that is via diet, diet such as um, having more probiotics in your diet, so fermented foods, for example. And they also looked at, at potentially looking at, of course, how to destroy the spike protein. In order to destroy the spike protein, they focused on autophagy. Now, autophagy, they mentioned numerous ways of inducing that specific molecular behavior inside your body. One of them is fasting, and I've also done a couple of videos demonstrating how fasting, fasting was good against COVID as well. And the last one was damage control. For damage control, they mentioned antioxidants, aspirin, and natokinase. I did a video on natokinase as well. And now for antioxidants, it's interesting because the authors of that cancer intervention support that's supposed to help you with the mitochondria function, they warn against antioxidants. So that is interesting to have that contrast there as well. Now we're moving to the next, next theory, and this is the involvement of the vagus nerve. Now, this is one of my most studied areas right now, and one of the reasons why is because I have a sponsor that allows me to now devote a lot, a lot more time to study vagus nerve. I absolutely love it, and I'm very interested in this area as well. Why? Because vagus nerve means the body system that is affected is, of course, your neurology, and the problems that are being created to your body are twofold. Number one is your organ control is affected because the vagus nerve controls function of your of multiple of your organs as well as your immune response is affected because again vagus nerve is involved in controlling and controlling that. How do you test whether your vagus nerve is working appropriately or not? You do it with a heart rate variability test. I did a video on that topic as well. So check it out and how you would be, what would be your intervention for that it would be vagus nerve neuromodulation. And I have now multiple videos about that when it comes to long cover as well. Moving forward, the next one I decided to focus was again, spike protein destruction that seemed to be of great interest to the audience of the channel. So I looked at the theory that I call Dr. McCullough protocol theory. And here again, you target the antigen, too much antigen, too much spike protein. So, so we talked about how to test for that already. And in terms of intervention that these authors proposed was natokinase, bromelain, and curcumin. So next one, and to round it up, basically this, this now, this is the last 
pillar that I wanted to investigate in terms of what could be contributing to long COVID is what I refer to as antibiotics theory. And here, the body system that is affected is your microbiome, your gut bacteria. And more specifically, the idea here is that, is that um, your microbiome can become a reservoir for the spike protein, for the virus, so that the virus can produce spike protein. We did a specific video on that as well, how bacteria could be a reservoir for the spike protein. Now, in terms of testing for that, there's two ways you could use you could use stool PCR to test for presence of the virus uh, and or you could also look for, you could do genetic sequencing for the bacteria as well, bacteria composition in the stool as well. And the treatment that these authors proposed was um, antibiotics and probiotics. So again, here's that probiotic mention. Then remember the very first two theories I tested were your blood system and immunology. I decided to just have a second peek for uh, in, into those systems to see what else I can learn. And one of them is uh, I looked into the hypothesis, what I called monocytes theory, <clears throat> where monocytes, specific type of your immune cells, are being affected. The reason why is because those particular authors were providing a separate independent angle of how long, how clots could be forming uh, and contributing to long COVID. So I was interested in that. The way they were testing for, for that is via their own proprietary panel of, of looking for specific cytokines and chemokines, basically molecules that are involved in the regulation of the immune system. And their proposed um, intervention for that was Maraviroc and statins drugs. And the last one, there was the immunology angle specifically i looked for iron deficiency and the reason why is because this is especially pertains to women and why women might be more predisposed to long covid than men and in this case the body system that is affected is your immunology the problem to your body is proper immune response might not be happening and the way you test for that is of course your circulating iron and appropriate iron regulating proteins in the in the blood and the proposed um, treatments for long COVID that these authors were proposing were use of antivirals number one hepcidin inhibitors and as well as interleukin-6 inhibitors all right so <laughs> basically this is summary of all of the work that I've done to study long COVID as you can see the take-home message here is that whole body is being affected. That makes sense because four systems that control your entire body are affected. That's your blood. Your blood communicates with the entire body. It's your nervous system. Again, communicates with the entire body. Your immune system, again, communicates with your entire body. And the gut microbiome, which via the last previous three I just mentioned, also communicates with your entire body. So clearly this is whole body problem. I would imagine that looking at least some of these type of tests would be a good way to, to uh, start investigating as to what might be most broken in, a, in an individual who has long COVID issues is because I would imagine that different parts of the body might be affected more in some long COVID individuals than others, depending on what was uh, going on with that individual prior to being, say, infected. All right, so this is my big summary of long COVID. Uh, so check that out for what the different tests could be uh, for interest and, and put recommended um, interventions there. And remember, we still do not have proper understanding as to what we should be doing for long COVID and how to treat it. So therefore, I simply went on my big, giant scientific investigation of that problem for you. Voila, there you go. And I look forward to seeing you in another video. Bye, everyone. Ciao for now.